Hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sonia Maya. So instead of talking about fitness inspiration, which is what I usually focus on in my videos, I'm going to talk more about something very psychological today. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I am in a clinical psychology doctorate program and I have a lot of interest in Let's have another. things that happen to our brains. Psychologically, neurologically, hormones get released that make us feel like we're in love with somebody, even after casual sex. And unfortunately, this happens mostly for women, and I'm going to break it down why it happens for women more than it happens for men. So I actually made a TikTok video about this about a week and a half ago, and it went semi-viral. I think last time I looked at it, it had like 700,000 views and like over 100,000 likes. It turns out there's like a lot of information out there that people don't know about, about sex and why we catch feelings which is apparently the worst thing that you can catch in 2020 as a woman, unfortunately. Fuck. So in my TikTok video about why we catch feelings, I talk about how there are three neurotransmitters that get released when you have sex, and that is serotonin, oxytocin, and vasopressin. Hormones are super powerful and they get released during sex. And this is what really leads to those feelings. So if you ever have casual sex with somebody and you just can't stop thinking about them, it's because of the hormones, mostly. Why is that, do you ask? What is it that's biological that makes us feel like we fall in love after sex? I know, it is annoying. We focus on oxytocin because it's a really powerful one in this video. And if you don't know about oxytocin, it is a hormone that is known as like the cuddle hormone or the trust hormone. It is the same hormone that gets released when a mother is nursing their newborn baby. It provides this sense of security and attachment and love, and it makes so much sense that it exists for biological reasons, but sometimes that gets released when you're having casual sex with somebody who hasn't actually earned a place in your heart. You might actually have this attachment to them because of the hormone. Oxytocin is produced by women a lot more than it's produced by men, unfortunately. And not only does it make you feel more secure and that you can really trust somebody, it also increases empathy and it might actually make you ignore certain red flags, like maybe someone who's not really looking for a relationship, even though they made it seem that way at first and they're just trying to string you along because they just want you know to have sex with you. Be careful of that because you might actually ignore the red flags because the oxytocin from the sex makes you feel like you can trust this person. And I also wanna make a very important note that if you use protection, the hormones do not get released as much. So definitely use protection unless this is somebody that you could definitely see yourself being with long-term, someone who's proven that you can trust them. And not only that, there has to be reciprocity. And that is a topic for another video. So let's get back to hormones. The thing that's very annoying and unfortunate about these hormones is the body and the brain, they cannot determine if the person that we are spending our time with is a fuck boy <laughs> versus marriage material. So it is our job to understand how these hormones work so we can protect our hearts. Not only protecting our body from STDs by using condoms, but using condoms to protect our hearts. Making this video to elaborate on how having sex unprotected makes this so much worse. I emphasize the importance of using a condom not only to protect your body from STDs, but also to protect your heart. Low hormones will still be released during sex. It won't be nearly as significant if you use protection. How could it possibly be worth the risk? Condom sex is still cool. Like it still feels good. You're still like, fuck. And I am not sponsored by Trojan, but I feel like I should be. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge will help protect your heart and your body. So how do we protect ourselves from these fuck boys that seem to be overwhelming social media, overwhelming of our lives and just breaking our hearts left and right? We have to swipe left on those shirtless selfies. I know you know what I mean because you've definitely seen them. Swipe left on that and let's only go on dates with men that are gentlemen that call us beautiful and gorgeous rather than fine, sexy, hot because they're just trying to get in our pants. Damn, the truth kind of hurts, doesn't it? So be aware of these hormones because they're very freaking powerful, okay? It's gonna get released either if he's good for you or he isn't. So you have to use your brain and not just your heart and your, you know, 
that area. You can't just listen to them. You gotta use a brain too, which is where I come in handy. Very true reality, especially in this day and age, that these hormones can really lead to misery, especially when short-term dating doesn't go as planned, we get left on delivered, left on read, whatever the terminology is these days, it can be really freaking painful. Way too many Caspers in this generation. I personally think that ghosting is super immature because if somebody isn't feeling you anymore or maybe they're afraid of commitment for whatever reason, I think it's the adult thing to do to be honest and transparent about your feelings rather than just ghosting out of nowhere. So I'm going to make a video on ghosting because it's something that's really irritating to me and I've been ghosted before. A lot of my friends have been ghosted. It's not a good feeling and it also leaves so many questions unanswered, which is so unfair, but I'm gonna make a video to kind of talk about how you should feel happy that that person got out of your life when they did because it wasn't your person. But it sucks how ghosting is so common in this generation. Let's talk a little bit about what happens for men. There are still hormones being released. Unfortunately, they don't catch feelings the same way we do after sex. So why is that? So men get more of a simple pleasure from sex than a very emotional connection that's very impactful. Like the one that us ladies get when we can't stop thinking about somebody after having casual sex. It's more like a simple pleasure for men, kind of like a rush of dopamine that comes from taking drugs. It's like that kind. It's not gonna be like, oh my God, I'm in love with this person. Because there's more of a dopamine rush for men with sex than there is of like an oxytocin rush, this is the reason why sex addiction is a lot more prevalent among men. A little bit more about dopamine. When you fall in love, there's dopamine release. Dopamine is a happy hormone. It gets released when you take drugs, when you gamble. Just like anything addictive that you can think of in life, dopamine gets released. So that is why sex can be addictive for a lot of people, especially men. The thing about dating is when you are dating somebody and happy and interested in that person, dopamine gets released no matter what. I want you to think about how men can actually fall in love with a woman more by catching feelings for them during the dating process than catching feelings from them from the sex. Men kind of have to feel like this sense of attachment from the dating. So I think that's why a lot of people say that you shouldn't have sex on the first date. I actually have a different opinion on that. I honestly feel like if the moment feels right and that's your person, then it doesn't really matter when you have sex with them. I have differing views on that. That's also another topic for another video. Why is it that men don't get impacted by oxytocin the same way that women do? Testosterone blocks a little bit of the release of oxytocin. That's kind of why the hormone doesn't really make them catch feelings as much because of the presence of testosterone. So for women, the oxytocin slowly builds up during the dating phase, well, from the kissing, the attention, the cuddling, oxytocin, oxytocin, and then at orgasm from sex, it skyrockets. Oxytocin is just like, pfft. So there's another one called vasopressin that I mentioned briefly earlier. That goes up if a man is interested in a woman, but apparently, according to research, vasopressin, which is another like feel good hormone, kind of like the other ones, it drops for men when they have sex. So that could be another reason why if you're casually dating someone and he's kind of excited about you, he might actually lose interest because of this drop in vasopressin. And it doesn't happen all the time. Obviously, if someone's really feeling you, the vasopressin, I don't think it would make that much of a difference if you have sex on the first date. I think it's more in the fact, like how, how compatible are you with this person? This topic makes me think of the movie, Think Like a Man. A lot of people think that if you really want a guy to like you, you have to make him chase you, meaning don't have sex on the first date. I kind of agree with this, but I also don't really, because I feel like if somebody's meant for you and it's meant to be and they're compatible for you, they shouldn't lose interest because you gave it up right away. I feel like that just makes it less transparent. Like I think you should just live in the moment and do what feels good in the moment. But I do understand the, the science behind why a man might lose interest if they get in your pants right away. So I feel like there's a little bit of truth to that, but I don't believe it 100% because if it's meant to be, he shouldn't care that much about it either way. So overall, I want you to take this out of this video. Ready? Women, catch feelings after sex, especially unprotected. So be careful and protect your heart. On the other hand, unfortunately, men catch feelings when there's that sense of commitment, when they really like someone over time, that dopamine gets released, they feel like they're on drugs. It's not from the sex, it's more from the being around that person and learning more about you. So it's unfortunate how it's different for men and women, but that's just the way it is. So it's good to know 
before you get hurt. I would love to hear your comments and feedback below. Do you usually wait before having sex with a partner? How many of you are in successful relationships currently, but didn't wait and you had sex right away? I would love to hear because I know it's possible. I have a good friend that had sex on the first date and she's getting married. So I know it's possible, but I think it, a lot of the time it is good to make them wait, but I don't want to believe that. So I'm just going to go with my my current thought process on it for now. If hormones have gotten the best of you, do not be hard on yourself. It's happened to me too, okay? We're only human. But now that you know about it, you'll be better in the future. One day you will find somebody that is not only compatible with you physically, but compatible with you emotionally, that will care about you, that will be there for you, that won't play with your emotions like so many people do these days. You will find your person. I will find my person. We will. But for now, let's just be happy being single. Let's feel complete the best way we can on our own because that's that's what we gotta do until we find the one, you know? Thank you so much for watching. Please comment below if you want more videos like this. I'm gonna start focusing more on psychology and sex is just an interesting topic. People love hearing about sex. It's really important for us to know about it because it really does impact our lives in so many ways. Intercourse can be wonderful, but it can also cause tremendous pain. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go eat some lunch.